Did you know you can actually save structs and enums in Swift Data? Sometimes you don't need a relationship and I'm not talking about cupping season. <laughs> what I'm actually talking about is how we can use structs because structs are a great lightweight way to actually link data together. And we're going to be continuing with the to-do app in my free Swift data course on this channel and we'll build a configuration screen as well as discuss some of the best practices and see what Swift data is doing under the hood with structs and enums. So without further ado, let's get this money, man. So looking at our you know, Swift data course here where we're basically building a to-do list app, I've actually added a brand new screen here. <laughs> so this brand new screen, you might be wondering, bro, what's, what's going on here? But essentially what it is, is a configuration screen for us to configure, you know, different types of frequencies and how often and how early we want a reminder to remind us. Now, all we've got here is we've got two enums. So one for frequency, one for how early we want to remind us. And we've got a struct here, which will basically help us, you know, hold that data as well. Now I can actually interact with all this. Um, it all works when I'm clicking on it. You can see it's highlighting stuff, but right now it's just hooked up to a state property. So this hasn't got any reference to our items that we're going to be pers persisting in Swift data. So I want to hook this up to our view so I can basically say for this item, I want to have this frequency and this early reminder. Now, when you're working with wanting to save enums and structs in Swift data, the main thing you need to do is make sure that they're codable because that's how it converts it in terms of, you know, encoding it and converts it back so you can use it by decoding it. So if I go to the top here, our enums, we want to just mark them as codable. Not code that back. <laughs> codable. <laughs> Jeez, man. You can tell it's early in the morning for me, man. So we're going to mark this as codable, mark this as codable. And we also want to do this with our struts. Now, because we're using like, you know, default, you know, kind of like known Swift data types like int structs or like int strings or that. We don't need to write our own custom encoder and decoder, but if you have your own custom object, you probably will need to handle that. Um, but I'm not doing that in this video. Now I'm going to need to actually create a brand new data model with a migration. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how this works, but if you want to learn more about migrations, check out this video on my, you know, within this course that covers everything you need to know about how migrations work. So as you can see here, we've now got our item config here. And this is in our V4 data model, which we're, you know, going to handle with some kind of migration. So just to make sure that this is all all right, I'm just going to run the app. And you can see that when we run the app, everything seems to be, you know, fine. So this seems to be working all good. Cool. Now make sure you stick around because I'm actually going to show you how to hook the data up to, you know, your actual Swift data model. And also as well, some best practices and tips and tricks on when to use structs and enums to save them into Swift data. The first thing we need to do is actually bind our item config to our item. So in order to do this, we're actually going to need to change our state to a binding. So I'm just gonna update this now. And you might be wondering why am I not using bindable? Well, the reason being is because our config isn't actually an observable object. It's basically just some kind of like datum. It's just some kind of struct. So we'll go update this to be at. And then once we update that to be binding var config, we need to update our preview. Now I'm just going to hard code it with a constant for now, just to speed things up. And then let's just build our project. Cool. And then now we should get an error because it's actually expecting us in our update to do view to actually pass in a binding of this config. So we'll choose fix. And then what we want to say here is dollar sign item, which is our item. And then we want to pass in that new property that we created before config. And we're going to do this in one more place. So we'll do that there. Like so. And then now you'll see that the build has succeeded. So let's just run this. And then if I go into my app and I create a brand new to do, we'll just say here, we'll say go for a run and then configure our to do. So if I was to choose daily and remind me 60 minutes before update, and then now if we'll choose done, you'll now see that we've got our go for a run, but it doesn't actually, we don't actually have any kind of visual indicator to tell us and to show us, you know, what the actual frequency is. Now to inspect this, we're going to use Core Data Labs and Core Data Lab is a tool that I actually went over in a video within this course to show you how to debug, you know, your Swift data models. So in, I'm just going to open this up. 
And if I choose my simulator, so our simulator is the iPhone 15 Pro. And then we'll just choose our to do's and choose select. And just to take this out of full screen, if I select our items, you can now see here that our config is actually being saved as JSON data here. So you can actually see the JSON representation of what's going on. So you'll see that it's being saved here as a, being saved as a composite value. So we can now see the JSON of our, you know, config here. So you can inspect that. So it actually is working. So you might be wondering, okay, when should I actually use a struct or relationship? So for me personally, relationships are really useful when you want to query some kind of data independently. So let's say I want to query the categories within an actual item. You know, I don't, I can't really do that with this because it's being saved as JSON. So I can't write, execute some kind of predicate. But in our case here, this configuration is per to do so we're not really going to write a query to say get me all the early reminders and frequency ones you know it's just a, key, a config for this item now i will warn you there is a small issue with when you're saving um structs for pre-filled items so when i actually run the app if you've been following along in this course all the other to-do items except from go for a run are actually pre-filled items that i go over in this video here now something that i've realized is that when you do a migration and you add a structure or enum um, and you want to save it sometimes it can actually crash yeah. and in this scenario it is crashing so if i wanted to edit this item here you'll see that i actually get a crash here in um you know in our app and even though the migration was successful for the config and it is nil and everything's all good um it seems to crash when you want to edit the item so that's just something to be wary of so if you're planning to do something like this um you might want to be a bit wary until Apple fixes this. Now, I know we're ending the note on a crash, <laughs> but if you want to learn more about Swift data, you can actually check it out in this playlist on my channel here. And I actually have more playlists that cover other, you know, topics in iOS and Swift UI. So that's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.